Greetings, Team Lobster, please. Uh, I hope you're all safe and sound, uh, taking care of each other, taking care of your families, and, and above all else, of course, taking care of yourselves. I've been hearing from uh, quite a few of you asking about how the Lobster Place is doing, and of course, asking us or asking me about uh, job opportunities that may exist. So I wanted to give you a status update about the business and uh, let you know what I see happening over the next few weeks and months. Uh, as you know, we reopened the Bronx and Chelsea Market back in April. Uh, the Br Bronx continues to make deliveries to the handful of restaurants in the area that are open doing takeout, uh, but things are very slow. You know, you have to remember our industry is still under uh, lockdown and there's just not a lot of business. We're making maybe 15, 20 deliveries a day. Uh, on the Chelsea market side, we continue to do Mercado uh, grocery delivery orders, uh, which has been good. Uh, we also, in recent weeks, have opened up a takeout window on 16th Street, back in the lobster section. We're actually handing food to, to people who walk by through that window. It's awesome to see. Uh, really creative and, and just incredible job being done by the team down there. Uh, and as awesome as it is, unfortunately, there's just not a lot of business, a lot of people walking around. So, you know, we're fighting, doing whatever we can, but, but business is slow. I think that over the next uh, six to eight weeks, things are going to improve slightly, continue to improve slightly. Like you gotta think uh, when we opened back in April, we just did a, a couple of deliveries and, and each day it got a little bit better. I think that's gonna continue. I don't, however, see any significant change happening in the next six to eight weeks. Uh, and what that means is there's probably not going to be any significant new opportunities in the next six to eight weeks. Uh, the, the, the first major change that we might get to, that I'm hopeful we will get to, is in mid to late July. Um, at that point, it's possible that the governor may uh, allow restaurants to welcome guests back into their dining rooms. Um, I say may because if the virus starts to spread again before then, uh, it won't happen. But uh, if it does happen and, and the governor does permit restaurants to open and, and actually have customers inside, we can expect that we'll go from very slow to you know a little bit less slow. And, and there may be some opportunities that open up at that point. Uh, I'm certainly hopeful that that's gonna happen but we kind of have to wait and see. Um, assuming it does happen, we should think a little bit about what the world looks like after places reopen. We all have to understand that even when the governor uh, allows restaurants to reopen, there's going to be restrictions on the number of people that are allowed to go into a dining room. And if restaurants are restricted to only serving half as many customers as they usually do, they're only gonna do half as much business. And that's gonna keep us slow for a while. What's more, uh, we're not gonna get back to, to normal until people in general, all of us feel safe in a crowd. Um, you know, workers have to be able to get on the subway and, and, and come to work and work in close quarters in a kitchen and customers need to, to come into a crowded dining room and feel good about it. And until there's a vaccine or a medicine that can control this virus, that's just not likely to happen. So, you know, even after July, when it's likely or, or at least hopeful that, that restaurants can open, things are going to still be slow for a long time. What this means for, for the Lobster Place family uh, is that employment opportunities are going to return, uh, but they are going to return slowly, and they're not all going to return. Not every job that we had six months ago is going to be available between now and July, or even between now and the end of the year. Uh, as things improve, you know, we'll reach out to you individually to make you aware of openings. Uh, but at this point, you know, if you have to move on and take advantage of a new opportunity, uh, we have to respect that. You have to do what's best for, for you and your family. Uh, that's the number one priority. You know, this has been a gut-wrenching experience for all of us. It's frightening. The uncertainty can be crippling. Uh, the, the virus itself uh, can be terrifying. I try to keep perspective. You know, my parents started this business 50 years ago. 
And along with key members of our team, I've been running it for, for over, uh, almost 20. And, and we are not going out without a fight. Uh, not only are we not going out without a fight, I'm confident that we're down the road going to emerge from this thing bigger, better, and stronger uh, than we were before. When that time comes, uh, I hope we can welcome every single one of you back with open arms. But the the reality is that there's there's a lot of fighting to be done uh, to be done before that time, and it's going to take time. As always, if you have questions or comments or concerns or, or just want to chat, just want to uh, let me know how you're doing. I'd love to hear from you. Call my cell phone, email, text, and of course you can call Karen or any of the other managers. Uh, you know. If nothing else, we want to hear how you're doing. Uh, I'll reach out again in the coming weeks and give you an update. Uh, until then, as always, stay strong, stay safe, and, and stay resilient.